Okay, welcome to this brief tutorial that will walk you through the CSU ThinkSpace blog platform. This blog platform might look a little bit familiar to you if you're used to using WordPress because it is a multi-site installation of WordPress. So that's why there might be some similarities. So we're going to start right at the very beginning and that is where you log in. So when you log in for the very first time, you might think nothing is happening and that's because this is a single sign-on site. And so when you click on log in, you need to just double check and your name should appear up in the top right-hand corner if you're already logged into another CSU window. But if you're not logged in, it will prompt you for your username and password for CSU. Once you know you're logged in and you can see your name up here, the first thing that I would encourage you to do when you first set up your blog is to edit your profile. And we can do this by clicking edit profile. Now yours will look a little bit different from mine because you probably won't have all of these menu items going down the left-hand navigation. But what we want to do is we want to go to your avatar and profile. And this is where you are here. So this will allow you to change the color scheme of your blog if you like. And it will also let you change your nickname if you choose. Now, some of these you can't edit because they're loaded automatically from the CSU uh, login, but we can change this one. So if you want your full name to appear, you can change that. And one of the more important things is the biographical information. So this doesn't have to be your life story, but a sentence or two here would be really helpful for your readers to get to know who you are and whether or not they're going to be interested in reading about your blog. So just a little bit of background information, especially thinking about this blog and how it's related to teacher librarianship. So information pertinent to that, such as perhaps the school you're teaching at or your experience in education, and perhaps why you've joined this course or just a little one or two sentences, maybe three at the most. Finally, you'll need to set your profile picture. Now, it doesn't have to be a photo of you. It can be an avatar. It can be a symbol that represents you, but something just to make the blog a little bit more your own. There's something a little bit um, unprofessional and off-putting about uh profiles that have no photo at all and just have that shadow avatar. So to edit that, you'll need to go to your avatar. So click on that and you'll see that you're able to choose your file, choose a small size file and the smaller the better because this is only going to be very small image on your screen and make sure that it's a JPEG, a GIF or a PNG file, which are the most common image files. So you're probably not going to have too much trouble there and then click upload and the image will automatically upload. It will allow you to crop if that's necessary and then it will set the image for you. So our next step is creating our first blog. Now, when we go to create our first blog, you need to do a little bit of pre-thinking because it's going to ask you information such as who, what you're going to title your blog and the username you'd like to append. So you can see in mind that I've got Kayodoni as my username, try and choose something that's identifiable. And then your the name of your blog itself, I've just called this one all about teacher librarianship. With the name of your blog, try to choose something that's descriptive and something that is uh, going to indicate to readers what they're likely to expect but also try to make sure it's not too narrow and specific because remember that this blog is going to be with you for your entire teacher librarianship course. And we want it to relate to all of the work and learning that you're going to be doing throughout all of the different subjects. So don't make it too specific to this particular subject. Once you have set your title and you've created your blog, you will then see that all of these little options will appear in the left-hand nav. Now, the first place I'd encourage you to go after that is the settings and click on general. And you'll see here that you can actually change your site title. So that's one of the advantages of a blog and you're working online is that most things you can edit, you can come back and change if you like. So if you give your blog a title, go to bed, have a think about it, and then wake up the next morning thinking, no, I've thought of a much better title for my blog. This is where you can change your site title. But once you've 
chosen a blog title, I would really encourage you to stick with it after that. Don't go chopping and changing your blog title. Here though, underneath is another important thing that I'd like you to change, and that is your tagline. Now, the standard tagline is just another CSU ThinkSpace site, and this needs to be changed in order to reflect your particular site. So you just need a short little phrase, something catchy, something that will be memorable. So here it's going to be musings of a TL lecturer. So you can see that it's nothing too descriptive, but it gives an indication of what the blog is all about. So that's the next step that I encourage you to take. Now, in the next little section, we're going to be talking about setting your privacy settings. So the first one is a privacy setting to do with your site visibility. To get to that, you need to go to settings and reading. Now here, you will see site visibility halfway down the page. There are a number of privacy options that you can choose from and it's completely up to you. However, there's a general setting and then there's other settings that if you would like to invoke, um, I would ask if you could just contact me so we can have a little bit of a discussion about it first. So for the purposes of this course, we would prefer for you to tick discourage search engines from indexing this site. This means that your blog is freely available to the uh, to anyone who has the URL, the link to your blog site, uh, but it's not indexed on a search engine. So if someone looked it up on Google, it wouldn't, be come, wouldn't come up in the search results. But if someone from outside of CSU wanted to look at your blog and they had your blog address, they would be able to access it. The reason we ask you to choose this option is because it's really good practice to be able to share your blog and you might well want to share your blog posts with your principal, with colleagues, with other TLs, with other teachers. And if you have this option, you can do that very easily. Also, it allows your fellow students and myself to subscribe to your blog using an RSS feed reader, which makes it a lot easier to keep up with blog posts and we'll talk about RSS feed readers a little bit more as time goes on. I would discourage you from choosing allow search engines to index this site because this means your blog is freely available to the world. And while at, in the future, that would be perfect, while you're using your blog as part of the tasks to complete for your course, it's preferable that you don't open it up to just the general public. Now you can lock your site down um, more than this and that is totally up to you. But if you choose to lock it down a little bit more, I'd ask you to let me know and let us discuss that just so that I can understand your reasons and also so that I can be aware that I'm going to be at need to go through different procedures in order to access and that your fellow students are going to do the same. So you can click visitors must have a login, which means that only CSU users or user, registered users of ThinkSpace will be able to access and uh, only able to when they're logged in. So this is fine. It just might make it a little bit more difficult for people to access if they're not logged in on their phone and things like that. Uh, you can make it only registered users to this site. Now that I would definitely say no, don't do that because you don't want to have every have to enter everyone as a registered user. Um, that would just be painfully slow and uh, a little bit pointless because you basically will achieve the same purpose with uh, the first visitors must have a login. Uh, you can also make it password protected. The difficulty with this is letting people know what the password is and including myself and I'll need to access your blog for assessment and other markers will need to access your blog for assessment purposes. So if you are going to make it password protected, we really need to understand what, what, that, what your thinking is and how we're going to manage that password access because there's a lot of students and it's very difficult to manage when everyone's got different passwords and things like that. So um, totally up to you, but unless you've got a particular reason for locking your site down, I would encourage you to go with discourage search engines from indexing the site.